Hey folks, I'm here in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Oklahoma Kayak. Uh, we're gonna do an install of a Torquedo Ultralight 1103 on a, a Hobie Outback. Uh, I actually own an Outback and have the same setup um, on, on my, uh, my Outback, but I didn't do the install video for it. It's very similar to the one, the install that I've done with foot control steering on the uh, on a compass I did at Ocean City Kayak a um, year and a half ago. But we're gonna jump in there and uh, meet some of the folks here and I'm gonna show you step by step how you're uh, installing an innovative sportsman foot control steering kit on a Hobie Outback. So here are the tools and the, the parts we're gonna need, um, specifically the innovative sportsman uh, foot control steering kit. Those are the, the foot braces that we're putting on. Uh, these are the 90 degree adapters that we're going to have up in this area that these will go on. And I'm, I'm going to do half. I'm actually going to rig half of it and, and have the, the folks here do the other half um, after we rig the the tubing. We're going to drill holes in this boat and they're going to run up here to the foot control steering, the foot slides. And uh, there'll be more, but that's that's the rough overview. Ready to rig a boat? Let's do it. All right. Let's My name is Mason Kidd. Uh, I'm an employee at Tulsa Kayak. I pretty much help do everything, sell kayaks, move kayaks. Um, I fish a lot out of kayaks, love to pond fish. Uh, I've done, done one fishing tournament uh, in Arkansas. What do you fish out of? What uh, kayak are you in? Uh, Cuda 12. Nice. Quick boat. Very cool. Uh, my name is Braden. Uh, I'm an employee here at Tulsa Kayak. Um, you know, same with them. Basically, just do whatever needs to get the job done here. Um, I fish a lot of the KBF tournaments and then a lot of the local stuff here in Oklahoma. And I fish out of a Prolink 14. Nice. I'm with both stores, OKC Kayak and Tulsa Kayak, collectively known as Oklahoma Kayak. Uh, and uh, I keep quitting, but they keep making me come back. So uh, I keep trying to, to resign my position. But uh, uh, I call it frugally unemployed. Owning kayak stores is uh, is uh, has its challenges. Let's just put it that way. Uh, we are one of the biggest kayak stores in the world. We have about 2,600 kayaks in stock. We have gosh, probably 200 different models and probably 50 different brands from ones that pedal, ones with motors, you name it. We've got every flavor of kayak imaginable here. Nice. And these guys do most of the rigging? They're the grunts, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do a real good job. Well, you Thanks. guys are gonna be hands-on with us as we as we dive in. Uh, we've already put the, the battery on a charger there. Um, I've covered this in previous videos. If that light's blinking, it's taking a charge, and when it's solid red, it's, uh, it's full, so. Uh, but this is our Outback. Um, I think, we're going to start by just running the, the foot control steering tubes. Um, I have the Innovative Sportsman kit here. Actually, we're going to put these on first. Let's do, uh, let's do the foot control steering slides with the, the 90 degree adapters. Okay, so with the foot control steering you get two sets of this track and then the, the foot control steering the foot pegs and these are adjustable this way but we want it in a nice you know middle of the road kind of position it's actually going to be you know right here in the same region as the uh this, as the mirage drive i don't know if we can slide this forward or slide the box back but what you want to accomplish and i know it works because i've done it with mine is is we gotta take these little pegs off there. We don't want to 
to crowd that. And it actually sits where the range of motion is a little bit above that. If you feel that it is crowding it, the, the quick solution is that when you go to use the Mirage Drive, you slide these forward like that. We're gonna do these with these 90 degree adapters. And that's gonna slide in here on the track. And it's gonna attach with the hardware that, that Trey from Innovative Sportsman gives us. So we're gonna put this aside for now. That's gonna attach there, but we need a connection here. And it's really up to the installer. Um, we can set a piece of track on there, uh, and I actually brought some, How's it going? Hey. some Mighty Mount XLs okay. that we can put on there. We can do that, or we could actually put it directly, if I can find the other one, directly into the hull. Um, I'm gonna need Dave to come back and kind of make that call, but it, you know, you can either do this, which is fairly clean, uh, or you can, and I'll just get hardware and just, just sink a bolt directly into that. So we'll wait for Dave to come back, make that call, and then we'll proceed. So Innovative Sportsman gives you the hardware in there with the 90 degree adapters. It's important that you're putting this side and not the lock nut on the inside of the track. The reason for that is once you go to put this in, it, it has to look down the line. You have to be able to, to clear it. And when, when you put the bolt in there, sometimes as it comes back, it'll whack, it'll hit it, and you'll feel that, that friction. I'm just making a noise, but it's it'll actually stop on it if you have the actual bolt on there. So that's what you want to do. So that's grabbing pretty good. I don't have anything sticking out. I can still get that um, the uh, wing knob wherever I put it will sit there like that. All right, so Dave made the call and we're gonna put the Mighty Mount XL here, which gives some adjustability, but I think more importantly, gives the customer who's gonna have this boat a little bit more track up here. I love having um, a Yak Attack lock and load base there for camera mounts, for all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's, it's just good to have more track. Away from the ample track you have here, it's good to have some forward, so. Um, these are fairly simple to install. I'm going to do a couple pilot holes here, right where it sits, and then these self-tapping, you know. It's important when you do these, though, that you go, you pick a drill bit that's uh, it's a little bit smaller. Then you really don't need to, I'm going to go one more. I don't even mess with silicone, because when this fat screw gets in the hole that's that's uh, that's smaller than it is, it pushes the plastic out. It's just important if you're using a driver, stop short of you know, and, and you may want to do the last little bit by hand. You just don't want to strip them out. But it's uh, pretty simple. I will do I will do one, and then. I'll go opposite that one and then I'll finish the rest once I'm done. I save these. These are great for plastic welding later. If you decide you've put it in the wrong place, you can use that and fill it in with a, you know, with a lighter and a, I have that video elsewhere. If you want to learn how to plastic weld, that is a video on the little stuff. All right, so I got the, the back side in. I actually just moved that up and I did the last little bit of, of that by hand, even though I did most of the work with the driver. Um, got my mighty bolt in there, drop that down and um, 
you know, if you if you need to, if you decide you want to, later you can pull this whole apparatus off and it's not, you know, no big deal and then you've got track. I don't know why you would ever want to take this off. I think once once this customer uses it, they'll be pretty pleased. All right, so let's put the track or put the, the sliding foot peg in there and when I'm done tightening this we're gonna look and see where this is is going to enter the hull because we have tubing to run somewhere but basically we're gonna attach the, uh, the spectrum board this stuff, which is like braided, just really thick braided fishing line, like it's got some, it's it's got some stiffness. It's gonna attach there, and it's gonna run. I'm gonna say somewhere in here, and it's gonna meet this tubing. So we're gonna run this tubing through somewhere in here, and I think the tubing is gonna run straight you just want it running as straight as possible all the way back to somewhere in here now where specifically here you you're actually going to use this part the steering triangle as a guide for how wide so you're going to have the the mounting bracket which is here it's going to be off the back but you don't want your steering lines to like rub on it. And this steering triangle is a really great guide for how wide. So I'm gonna say, this is our, these are our surfaces here. And somewhere right in here is where the tubing is gonna come out. But the width is always just, the tips of the steering triangle is a, is a good guide. So I think here and here. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this side and then you guys are gonna do the other side as a kind of return demonstration. So the drill bit I'm using is a 316th that matches this tubing, and I use this fencing wire to to stiffen it up. I'm actually gonna start with the other end. Because this one's running fairly straight. But I will run and stiffen this up as much as possible. I'll get a good long length of, of this. And with the foot control steering kit, you got enough to do, it's one length and you, you can do both sides with it. So I will put a lot in there. You always start with the side that has the least amount of access. I've done this install slightly different way and actually cut this out which gives you really good access back here but we're not doing it with this we're going to have access on the front side through this hatch okay we'll be able to to get at everything that's happening here but the plan is that it's going to go in here go underneath this little little whatever it is that little channel that drains the cup holder and it's going to run straight back along here to where we identified that we're coming out here so do you ever put soap or anything in there to make the less friction for the fencing wire or does it pull out real easy when you're ready to remove it um as long as i guide you know once this is in there you guide that through and it, it finds the hole that we do up there. This usually finds its way through. Okay. If it doesn't, you can you can take it back off and cut it at an angle. So it's like, um, well, like a syringe. It has yeah. a little chisel. It finds its way through easier. Nice. But we're going to... Drill this hole. And it's going to go here. And it likes to walk, so be patient with it. All 
again, save these. So this has a somewhat natural curve to it. I didn't get it totally straight, but I'm getting that curve. So it's going to hit kind of the outside. What I don't want it doing is coming here and running to the wrong side of a scupper or and I know I'm going to hit some, there'll be some foam blocks in there. But we get it in there and just kind of feel our way through it until we're close. But it's, it's, I can feel that it's running along that side. But that's a good tight fit. And I can hear it. I'm in the right neighborhood. I got a little bit of a bend in that fencing wire. So if I need to, I can twist it to orient it as I need it up here. Let's see if we can put our hand on it. There's a block in the way and you can pull those blocks out, but I overshot it. It's, it's right there. So go ahead and pull, pull some of that back. Give me about two feet of pull, pull back. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Keep going. A little more. Stop. Okay. So here we are on the other side. And I'm going to go in here. It's different on every kayak, but this is a straight shot from here to there. And inside the hole, it's, it's also going to be a fairly straight shot. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to, you're, you're good, I got enough. Um, I'm going to try and feel, I have the tip of it there, and I'm just trying to, I'm working around this block, but I'm trying to hopefully get the tip of that. I got to come around the other side to get a better angle. I'm just trying to poke it out there. There. Okay, so push on that side, Dave, while you're standing there. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep pushing. Amazing how much that wire helps. I've, I've ran tubing a million times and never done it this way. This is a great trick. More? Yeah, keep coming. It's getting stiff. All this. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I, I forget how much. Stop for a second. I just want to. I think I'm at the end of the wire too. I don't know if that makes any difference. Keep pushing it. I'm close. Okay. I got four inches, three, two, and then you can stop because I will. There. Okay. So that's through. That wasn't too painful. Now I'm going to pull this out and we're going to do some work with a lighter. And a screw and we're gonna we're gonna flare this out so all I'm doing is softening up the end of that I'll use the side of the, the lighter to to mash it but what that does where it mashes it out and mushrooms out the end of it which keeps it you know from this 3 16th hole keeps it from sucking up into there and disappearing and but you can see it also filled up that hole um, so the screw is one way to to open it or to keep that keep that open because we have to put the spectra cord through there and now we've we've basically blocked it up please a bit um you want to try it Try it with a drill bit? Sure, let's try that. You st you're still filming this with your suggestion, right? Mm-hmm. If it works. Yeah. <laughs> or if not. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I mean, whatever works. You just, you need this, this sucker open. Yeah, that works too. All 
All right, so the drill bit worked. It opened it up, but I still want to do the trick with the screw because more than, than just keeping that thing open, it's also going to flare out the straight part of the tube in a way that when we draw it in there, it's going to it's going to widen this part as you get close to the opening. The screws also, see so we just we just made that a little bit fatter. The screws also something that if if it draws in there and something goes wrong with the install, but you have enough length to get it right to there but not much further than that and you you just starting fresh you can get it right to it on the inside and you can stick the screw in and grab it and pull it pull it out and that's the point and we're actually going to use this where i use these little little vice grips these are useful but for now we're gonna call this one good and get a little bit of silicone on there we don't need much just just enough so that's gonna seat and have yep so we're gonna pull on this end and that's gonna draw you're gonna film it here and what I'm gonna do is try and stretch out that cord tell me when it's done it's at the end it's in there it's at the end of it it's not buried yet but yeah I mean is it did it seat mm -hmm. okay cool now come this way so this is where it's where it's snug, where it's it's happy, right? We're gonna take it beyond that, and I'm gonna get this ready to grab it, and I'm gonna pull it and stretch it a little bit more, and I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it. Let me tighten yeah. that a little bit more. Okay, so now this is holding it, and when it draws in, I'm gonna cut it there. Let me take a look. It'll, it'll pull in just from the stretch that I've put in there. I'm going to redo that and make sure. A little bit of stretch. Can I call you right back? Okay. Okay. So that was its, its happy place where it kind of... Just make sure you don't lose that. So at this point, we're a little bit vulnerable. If this comes off it gets harder so I'm gonna heat this up and just repeat the process here and that will draw in and say you're done and you're like good we're done and you loosen that this is still this is still soft you got to make sure that it that plastic hardens before you release with the needle nose vice grip Okay, I feel I've got good purchase. I've got a good mushrooming out. What I want to do now is open that thing up. I like your drill idea. So I might have pushed some stuff in there. Okay, that should be good. Again, we're gonna do a little bit more with a, just a tiny little bit of silicone coming out of there. Just on the inside rim. And then, watch this, boom. Just pulled right in. 
the distance is probably about like that. That's how much stretch I have in it. And it just keeps this seated nicely. Now we can put the, the spectra cord through. And if you're running the spectra cord and you're pushing and it just stops, it's possible that you haven't tried hard enough. It's also possible that you're, you have some kind of kink or crimp of the tubing in there. That happens sometimes, but what's more likely is you just, you gotta be patient with it and keep pushing through just a little bit at a time until it comes out the other end. Mr. Brown, you said tube below, you actually meant traverse, right? This is going through good. All right, so this is a really common thing that goes wrong. What I'm gonna show you, you're gonna go ahead and, and push on it. We've got the line right up to the edge there. And I'm gonna see if you can see, you see where that's trying to poke its way out. It's right there. Wants to come out, it's not coming out. Okay, so pull it all the way back out. All the way? All the way, man. You're just probably feeling a little betrayed right now after you did all that work getting it in there. What you're gonna do, take the, take this and you're gonna cut, you do it. Just cut it at an angle. If it's, if it's, like this? You know, yeah. Just at a 45 degree angle. Go into it a little bit more because we want to change your, yeah, it'll work. Okay. And then we're going to heat that just a little bit. All right. See if that works. And it, what it does is it gives it a narrower angle going in than, than just the round flat angle. So try it again. Okay. No problem. All right, you guys learn a few things? Yes. We're gonna stop for today because it's uh, six minutes to their closing time. We'll pick up again tomorrow. And then you guys are gonna do what I've done here, running the tubing and the spectra cord on this side and putting this, this sliding foot peg here. You guys are gonna do it in the morning. All right? Awesome. Cool. Good deal. All right, it's the next morning and uh, we're about to get pounded we just looked at radar and uh it's gonna dump but uh we're gonna it's finish Oklahoma. this install right <laughs> let's do it so i did this side and you guys were, were part of it we run the the spectra cord we put the tubing in that comes out there and um put the foot control steering here you guys ready to do the other half Yep. What yep. do you want to start with? They're very excited to be here early. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the tubing. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta drill holes. Yeah, we'll start with the tubing then. All right, go for it. The drill bit, when you put it on there, is is gonna want to walk on you. So, mm -hmm. as you as you start it, just just be mindful of that. Is that it's gonna want to. Yeah, you're not going to put total pressure on it from the beginning. Just let it, let it chew on that one spot. Or just do that. But yeah, you're good. And then you can start feeding the, uh, the tubing through there. Do it right here. All right. I need those 17 kayaks out of the side yard right now. Okay. I'll be out there in a second with my raincoat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't bring mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep mine in my car now. It's going to rain all day. There was rain inside where we had to go. Well, I almost brought it, but I it did like yesterday. It wasn't. It was just stopped raining at like eleven. Uh, we move it back. How far? Uh, I'll tell you when. All right, right there. This is gonna make it hard <laughs> with this rail being in the way. So you run the tube through and. On the other end, we're done there. It's a nice big flare out there. They run the tubing through back here. Get the vice grips on there. I'm just flaring out this end. 
So you're just replicating what it did here on that side. So you put in the uh, the Mighty Mount XL on that surface. And then we can put the other 90 de degree adapter here. All right, so we have the four bolt pattern here. If you can go ahead and start uh, just pulling the, the little plastic inserts out of there. We've got this uh, mounting bracket here. We're gonna lay it on there. This is gonna allow us to, to really get the spacing right um, for tying off the spectra cord there. So we have the hardware in this bag that we've already pulled the, uh, the steering triangle out of. Get, get to the stainless steel hardware. There should be something there that is threaded correctly for these. They look, they don't screw out, do they? They just pop out? I think they just pop out. They must be tight. Wait, it goes into a threaded thing, but I wonder. Yes. Yeah, this one's spinning. So you're gonna look in this and just find the, um, I think they're, they're Allen bolts. So you have different options in this bag. The one that you just had is if you're drilling holes in a in a boat, um, that's what these these bigger ones are for. And there's there's lock nuts um, that correspond with it. But yes, this this and the right size washers that are in there. Get four of those ready, and that's what we're going to use here. If we can ever get these. I think they stick them in there so that they don't oxidize. You don't get like grass rust in there or moisture. You just dump it out. Make it easier. Right there. Yep. Okay. You got one. We got one ring already. It's not raining right now, but we just had a big old one. So we got the bracket on there, we put the rocker in there, and we've moved the trim adjustment pin back one. Uh, it'll come in the in this first hole, but I think the second one is what works best, and it has to do with the angle of this motor. You actually want it back just a little bit. We'll take a second look at that once we get the pylon in there. The pylon is gonna come with with this loose. So your guys, you guys are going to want to put this profile and push it down on there really tight. This is a ring clamp. You're going to find the right, um, the right Allen wrench to get in that side of it. What is it on this side? Uh, just a lock nut. So we're going to find the right, um, right tools, the right socket for that. Cause we want to loosen this and compress it down. So one of you is gonna hold this profile. We don't want this loose. So it's gonna push down on that really tight in that little, this, it's got a little rubber gasket in there. You want it compressed downward. And then this ring clamp is gonna come down on top of it. You see that gap? Yeah, you wanna crush that gap. Yep. You good? Yep. And then, you're going to push down at the same time as the tighten all that. There you guys are good. Good, good. Once that's getting tight, then we can, uh, we, we're going to put another one of these ring clamps on that's going to set the depth. And then we put the rocker on, and then we put the steering triangle with the motor lift bar on. So there's a there's a sequence that's unique to each one of these the boats and how you have the steering lines connected to the the steering triangle and but we're gonna set it up right for this one so uh, very carefully without nicking this cut that uh, that zip tie off the reason it's really important not to nick this is that the air chamber that that goes that's here that makes this waterproof 
goes up through that pipe and is actually the same air chamber that is that is in the uh, in the cord. If you nick the cord, then moisture can get all the way down into this. You get moisture in this, and that's the motor. That's the electric motor, and you can kill it. So you want to keep this cord intact. It's actually how the motor breathes when it gets hot and cool uh, in different environments. It actually functions as a diaphragm. So yeah, find another ring clamp in there. Yep, and you're gonna you're gonna find the quick release hardware that's in there and put that in it. Yep, and basically you're going to put it right on top of it but this is how you're going to set the depth of the motor so let me grab this for a second and i'm going to say once this is is up in there you know in in flat water where you don't have a lot of deep water obstructions or, or shallow water obstructions you want this down pretty far because this kayak is going to roll over waves and you want that propeller to continue to grab. Whereas if you're fishing a river and you want it up a little bit higher because there's a lot of shallow water obstructions, you're going to set that um, based on, on this guy right here. So we can, it's really what's going to be on, on the immediate top side of this. So you can take that plug and put it up through that hole. Right here? Yep. And we can actually take that that pivot drone out, the the rocker. I can't do this one-handed because it's heavy. But just pull that out and slide it in. Yep. Take it out. Take the whole thing out. Yep. Let's do it over here. And then <coughs> you're going to slide that ring clamp with this this quick release onto that plug. Let me turn this around. Yep. All right, and you have another one of these quick releases in here that we're gonna we're gonna Got put it. that on the steering triangle which is gonna go above it so the steering triangle we're gonna have up here and then this one's gonna adjust up and down based on the depth that you have the the propeller how deep in the water so the other part that goes in the steering triangle is gonna go right here is this motor lift bar. So take that out of the bag. And this, this side with the hole, you're gonna put it in there, this but you're gonna turn it, yeah, you're gonna turn it around. It's gonna go just like this. And then you're gonna put that quick release hardware through there. piece here in between those two and you want it you actually did that right so you want this little nub facing facing forward you did good because you know it, these are steering limiting pins and gravity is going to pull this up like this and those pins are going to hit on either side of it to kind of kind of limit the steering How's that coming? You get that on there a little bit and we'll... It, I don't want that all the way tight. But as long as you're starting the thread, you're, you're good. Yeah, you're good. So, <clears throat> put the end of the plug through there. And 
the higher you can get the steering triangle, the higher the motor lift bar is going to be, the easier it is to, to lift it. So you're, you got that on backwards. So you want to come up through the other side. Because that, that silver, that aluminum bar is going to stick up in the top. Yep. Yep. And slide that on. That work like that? Or do you want to go under the shaft? Yeah, I want to go under the shaft, and then you have this stuff, which is called carbon assembly paste. I I call it grip paste. It's the same stuff that they put on. Um, go ahead and take that on the the bicycle seat post that has the same kind of quick release hardware, so that the, the bicycle seat doesn't rotate in some funky direction. So you're gonna. <clears throat> Take a little bit of that and you're going to smear it on just right on the top here. It's this pink gritty paste. Yep. Just squeeze a tiny bit of that out. You don't need a lot. They give you plenty. That's that's plenty. Just get that on your fingertip and just jam that right at the top there. All the way around. You want all surfaces near the top. Where you don't want this stuff getting is down here where the pivot drum is because it's going to make your steering not smooth. What it's designed to do and it's it's like uh, it's gritty like it feels like sandpaper right? Mm -hmm. It's like sand in some jelly and it, it allows this part the steering triangle which you want you know really perpendicular to the motor you want that to be up there and you're going to slide it up and then you're going to tighten this as much as possible. And we, we can wipe the excess around there, but we'll do that afterwards. But yeah, if you put it there, you're going to look down this way and make sure that this surface here of the back of the steering triangle lines up with this surface here, which is tells you that it's, it's even with the, um, the propeller. And then you're going to open the 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 um, the quick release arm straight back, so it's all the way open. And then you're going to tighten the, the screw. So get that that screw, yeah, that your fingers are on 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 this left side as tight as you can possibly get it. Leave that le lever open, straight back, straight back, and then tighten the screw as much as you can. And then you flip that lever. You got to do it like three times for it to it to really get to where it wants to tighten. There. If you don't tighten it right, someone goes to steer. This steering triangle is gonna slide on on this um, this pole here. So you've you've flipped that once, and now is it easier to turn than it was when you left it? Yeah. Yeah. If you do this three or four successive times, it should actually be painful on your hands the last time when you tighten that. It should really be a lot of pressure. And that's going to make sure that the steering triangle is not going to slip when you put all of your leg strength into turning this motor at 1100 watts or 3 horsepower. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. The back of the steering triangle lines up with the straightness of this. I think you have to go this way a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong. This cord may be skewing my... Thanks. Do we have any of that set? Yeah, I would, I would turn this one this way a little bit. But okay. you're, you're close. All right, we're good. Go ahead and set it in there. And this is, you know, this is the putting the motor on that the customer is going to do That's each time. Um, we'll open this up and just slide it down in that, that slot. Yep. And... That's on the back side. Yep. So we talked about this earlier with the, the trim adjustment pin back one. Um, 
if you look at this from the side, you can see that the, the, the bottom of the motor is kind of canted back a little bit. Once this, this whole boat starts moving, this, you know, this motor pylon is going to be straight up and down. Right now it's not, it's, it's swept back a little bit. If it is straight up and down at rest, it's actually going to tuck in a little bit and that propeller is going to be pushing water down at a little bit of an angle. You lose some efficiency. So this angle where it is slightly angled up a little bit at rest is, is actually where it should be. So, all right, we're at the point where we can measure out the right distance to put these carabiners on. This was right there. Do you know the knot you did you did at the front side? Can you do that again with um, with that right there? We're going to look up here to see that this is centered. I'm going to hold on to this and yeah, keep that centered. There. Pull up the the slack. Yeah, you hold on to this. Which hole do you use? The outermost. So we're going to that. So end. yeah, you're going to that, but you're actually going to stop a little bit shy of it because the knot you do with the coils is is going to tighten. Mm -hmm. So I like to stop eh, half an inch shy of it. Go ahead and do the coils there. I'll just do that that knot. But you get five or six different turns on it, you're going to be good. But you're starting so far back that the number of turns you're going to do is going to be about 15. So start closer. Closer. There. Yep, that's going to do it. And you just push that tag in through there. Through the loop right next to the carabiner once you get, get six at least. If you want, you can do more. You can do seven if you, if you got room. You just kind of scrunch it back that way to take up the room you got. Nice. Now, tag in through. I'm going to push that and make. Yep, that's it. And just tighten that up. And then you put it in the outermost hole because the inner more holes may be more sensitive, but you, you don't have as much power. With this size motor, the 1103, the three horsepower, 105 pound thrust, beast of an electric outboard that it is, you need it out there. So how are we doing on spacing here? You're right there. Got a little bit of slack. So oh yeah, thank you. redo it. Un undo that knot and you're you're gonna draw it tight and your your knots actually gonna be somewhere somewhere in this area it's one of the nice things about the spectra cord is if you if your knot isn't in the right position uh, you get to you get a do over whereas if you use the stainless steel cable once you crimp, there's like these little collets onto the doubling over of the of the braided steel cable. Hope you got it right the first time, because it's it is where it is. The spectra cord you can redo, which we're redoing. All right, guys, it's time to put the the throttle on, and what you want to do is to ask the customer. Which hand do you hold your rod in when the when the fishing lure is in the water? I know that can change based on if they use a bait caster and they change hands or whatever. Say they had a jig in the water. Whatever hand the fishing rod is in, and for me, it's it's my right hand. The rod is always in this hand. So when I'm sitting there, I want the throttle on the opposite side. So for me, it's gonna be on the left. And you can change it for your customer after you talk to them. But we're looking at this area right here. And you can fully put it on there, or you can you can even come back here and tap the back of the, the flush mount. This is the Innovative Sportsman flush mount. 
bit this is going to go on. But you've already got the data plug, and that's going to go in there, and then you're going to thread the cable there. Before we do that, I'd like you to get the WD-40. Give me a little squirt in there. We do WD-40 instead of dielectric grease. Um, everyone wants to put dielectric grease. Part of why you don't do dielectric grease is that you have to smush it in there. And if you smush it in there with like a Q-tip or your thumb, you can take those pins and bend them out of alignment. The dielectric grease also gets a little bit of, um, it can attract, that's perfect. Um, go ahead and seat that in there. It can, it can basically trap dust particles in there. So. So that sucker will, yeah, you're just spinning that. And we'll test the connection here in a little bit. But then you want to take, yeah, these are going to kind of route through there. And then somewhere here, where are the screws? There, yeah. See if you can find the right Allen. Who gets this one? Okay, so line, line that up there, and put them on there. All right, so we have this. We have the cable connected, and uh, and this is screwed on there. And you have a mighty bolt that's going in there, which this is gonna sit on top, right? And you got the, the wing knob somewhere, yeah? Where's the black plastic piece? My hand. Okay. Just get it on there like loose. On the back side, instead of doing the, the wing knob, let me see it, so I'm... Is it catching? No, it's not catching. On the back side, we're not using a wing knob, we're using there's an Allen bolt. Let's do this. Because the way that that cable comes out, there's not room for the wing knob. But we're using this sort of outer section here. You can put it on this one. Um, I know on mine, I actually have it where it's sunk directly into the plastic and then the front half is here. I like it near the front corner opposite your rod holding hand uh, but the front corner of the seat pan right in this area. But we're going to start with that there and let this customer decide where he wants it in a place you know that uh, we're, we're starting out there. It's personal preference. This way it's all in track and it, it's fairly easy to, to move it around. I want to come this way a little bit because that's not going to hold in the track. Alright, so go ahead and put the, the mag magnetic kill switch. Make sure your customer knows that this, this part lives on their life vest uh, so that if they fall out of the boat and the motor is operating, it will kill it. So go ahead and get that back on there. We're going to connect it all and just check the connection. Bring this data cable back to the battery. Before we hook up the battery, I want you guys to do the same trick with the WD-40 on this plug here in the middle and that plug there. So just without sticking the, the, the red straw in there, keep the red straw out of it because you don't want to push any of the pins. Just squirt a little bit in there. Yep and a little bit in there. Yep. Now, as you thread this on there, here, go ahead and, and just kind of, yeah, well, we'll just like that, that's cool. Um, line it up, you can see that the, look at the pins first and see which way those four pins want to line up with those four holes on the bottom. Yep. Now, I like to do it kind of side to side and then up and down as you push in and see if it seats. I like to know, yeah, and you're doing the, the finger trick. If you can move it with one finger you, and, it's, and it's threading on there, you're doing good. 
this right here, doing this improperly, where it cross threads, is the number one reason you don't have good connection between the battery and the motor. And you'll get on the throttle right there an E30 error code. So it takes a little bit. And if you, if you do it wrong the first time, and you're really trying to push and get it on there, uh, you're cross-threading plastic and it's always going to find that cross-threaded path instead of the correct one. But that looks good. I also like to keep this cap on there because sometimes, you know, we're taking this motor and chewing through like mud and stuff and if it's sitting like this and this is open and mud flies and just lands in there, I've actually burnt up a charger because I pushed, put the charger in where there was a bunch of like mud and stuff like in that plug and it and it fried a charger so this little protective thing is important go ahead and um and squirt some wd-40 on those two sides to facilitate good electrical connection again not dielectric grease wd-40 yep and i like that you're keeping the the pin the pins in that safe by not jamming this straw down in there which can like bend a pin and then you're not, you got to replace the cable and uh, there's a little tab look for the tab I want to show the tab for the video um, if it focuses yeah we just had it there for a second but it's it's on my nine o'clock that will line up with the groove that is Come on, focus. I think it's at the top, but you'll see it. Line up the tab with a groove, and that'll thread on there nicely when you have good connection. There. Yeah, it's just the right amount. All right, so we have <clears throat> we have a hundred percent, and I'm starting to to operate in this this number here says we're using 10 watts it's blinking searching because the gps unit that is in this battery is trying to look for satellites but we have a ceiling in the way so it's going to continue to do the searching but normally uh, your speed over land is displayed there and it uses the battery percentage the watt draw and your speed over land to calculate this number, which is your uh, remaining range. This one right here is exactly how I was able to cover 41.8 miles with one battery on the Chesapeake Bay. Because I always knew how much, how much more distance I had with the conditions I was in, the speed I was traveling and the battery percentage. It calculates all that to say that you have, say, 7.8 miles and if you say, uh-oh, I have to go 10 miles. Well, then you you back off a hair until that remaining range goes up to 10 miles. So that's one thing that's unique about the Torquedo is you always have the range knowledge to know, hey, I can get as far as I can, or as far as I need to, and not not worry about um, running out of juice. But that's it operating. Can you guys uh, show me the, the foot control steering working as well? Back and forth. Yep. Quicker. Yep. So that's it. As you as you push forward with with one, you need to have already released pressure with the other. It's a simple concept, but some people miss that idea. But all right, this is all set up. We got steering, we got throttle, we got power. We're missing the motor lift, so we want to run a line from here. You can actually shut it down. Um, this cord here, we're going to take and we're going to get one of these carabiners here. We're going to put that through there, and we're going to route one end of this. So put, put one end through there, th the other way. 
Yep. Give me an overhand map. Oh. Right at the end. Yep. Get the other end, and you're going to route up through here, or you can just clip it in. Be, be easy. Just, you know. And this is the part that they're going to do, that the customer is going to do each time they put the motor on, is just, just clip that on there. And then you're going to run this line through there, through this little... I'll let you guys do it. Nope. That one's for the reverse lock. We're doing that one. This? Yep. Yeah, this is gonna route up to where the, you know, where we set up the the motor lift um, cleat. But basically, this is how we're, how we're lifting the motor. When we come shallow, that, that lifts the motor up. Um, to route it around where you would put your your H crate, your black pack, whatever you have here, so it's not rubbing on it, we have some of these tie down eyelets. So if you can go ahead and open those. We're going to put one of those on the track here, so it's going to route it from there to there, and then somewhere up in here we're going to put a cleat, one cleat, and then one of these this little U-bolt to double it back. But go ahead and get that um, the tie-down eyelet on the track. Alright, give them a test pull from where you're at. Yep. So I've seen people that want to put like pulleys and stuff in there to make it easier. If you get this this um, motor lift by bar as far up on the the pipe as possible. It's an easier lift, um, and it, it's really not that hard. And when you put pulleys and stuff in between there to make it easier, you're actually eating up the distance that this can that this can come up, and it also limits how far this can come up out of the water. And if you got a bunch of grass that's that's kind of collected in this area, you won't clear it if it doesn't come this far, this part, come this far down and that part doesn't come as far up. Hopefully that makes sense. So <clears throat> you've got the cleat and there's this other part here. This U-bolt is going to go actually up there and the cleat can be back there. And these are the, the track nuts and the the um, yeah, you can let it down. Um, and the screws that are going to attach those to the um, to the track. So go ahead and take those. Those came with the um, with the Torquedo. So put those through all the um, the U bolt and then the the cleat. The cleat is going to face this way because as you lift it, and I'm going to change hands it's easier to lift when you do like a bicep curl towards yourself as opposed to you grab it here and you scoot it forward and then lock it down so we don't need to go through here then no like you would if you were going up that way you're going to be coming it's going to be facing this way and it's going to come in this way because this line is going to go up to that u-bolt take a u-turn and come back through the cleat there let, let them get it on on the track first, but I gotta grab a Phillips head screwdriver for you. And make sure that this one's. Let me see which way it's facing. It's facing back this way. Yes, that's what you want. So the length that you have there is enough to do both the motor lift on this side, and we're going to put a um, another tie-down eyelet on this side.
for uh, for the reverse lock. But is that all tight? So what you're supposed to do is to put that little knob on there. But because I like to have more purchase when I lift it, I'm not using the knob that it comes with. I do these little, and you can use like a, a pull start handle replacement if you go to like Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. I just made it with a little PVC pipe. So run it through, run that okay, cord cut through this down there. A bit. You'll cut it in a moment. <clears throat> But just run it through there, and that gives you a nice big handle to, to pull towards yourself. But yeah, we're gonna get the we're gonna get it, you know, through there. Tie the overhand knot and get this handle so that it's like it's almost flush with that, so that when you grab that and pull it towards yourself. So we're gonna lift. I'm going to lift this a little bit to give you just a hair, a little bit of slack. Here, go back down to pull it down real okay. quick. Pull it, pull it taut, pull it, pull it. All right, and then now you can pull it and I'll Okay, tie and it. I'm, I'm giving you slack and you can take another two inches maybe and you're going to leave a little bit of, when we cut that, a little bit of extra line so that if your customer wants to to adjust it longer, I don't think he's going to want to. Here you go. And then the lighter. The other end. You dropped it. That's all right. Now, see where we're at with that. You can let go with that. And that is, I think, perfect. So give me a pull. It's awkward for you standing next to it, but if you're sitting here, it's it's pretty good. And yeah, you got it locked in there good. We're up. Good motor lift rigging. Nice job, guys. To tie a knot on the, that carabiner which you're gonna you know when when the customer puts the motor on each time they use the, the carabiner is just gonna slip on there and you already got that line running through here the other half of the the cord here we're running the other Half the cord through that tie down eyelet that we put there. Yep, and I put another tie down eyelet there. And then we can use this guy with an overhand knot. And really, all this does when you're pulling on it up there is engage this reverse lock so that when the when you want to go in reverse. That this motor isn't isn't going to to kick up. It's not going to pull itself up with a prop. But when you release it and you hit an obstruction, <laughs> I got to release it. That it will kick up. So that's how the reverse lock is is working. Can you see the teeth in there grabbing the trim adjustment there? Yes. All right. And you tied an overhand knot there. Not yet. I would, I would leave a little bit of extra length. Oh, right here. Yeah, try that. People have different <clears throat> kind of positions they want their wrist in to, to do that. But so if you, you give them a little bit of extra to play around with it. You don't cleat it, right? No, we don't cleat the the reverse lock. So you can trim that. Use the lighter. And we're, I think we're about done. All right, so we are fully functional with the throttle and the foot control steering. And, and I will tell you, 
you know, if you take the um, take these off and hit this kind of low on your foot, you will clear over these. But if that still bothers you, you just slide these out of the way to use the Mirage Drive. Um, and they slide back in very easily when you want to go back to the motor. But the last step here, you've got the manual, right? Yes. I want you to find the error codes. And you, you have like, how many different languages of manuals here? But he has, you got the German and uh, an English one. You go to the page with the error codes and you we take pictures because nobody is going to take this job. document out on the water with them. But when you get an error code that pops up here, you want to be able to quickly reference it. The way that I do it on my phone, in my albums, I've made an album that is Torquedo Documents. Is there any more pages of this? Or I click on that, and these are all of my error codes on my phone. But, here, I'll help you find it. So, yeah, you're in the English section, and this shows you the install, but no one likes to read this stuff and learn how to install. They just watch videos that I produce. So there'll be charts that show error codes. Error codes are going to show up on your throttle and they're they're essentially a um, error messages. They're essentially a check engine light for your system that tells you some very specific things that you can do hopefully in the moment to clear the error codes that tell you a little bit more than hey just get it to a service center. You know, it's better than a than a just check engine light. But if you take pictures of these three pages with your cell phone, then you've got them. If you can encourage your customers to get these before they leave, take pictures of pages what 114, 115, and 116, then they have them in their phone. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Appreciate your guys uh, help doing this install, and uh, hope you you guys do a whole bunch of them here at, at Tulsa Kayak, and then um, there the other stores. What Oklahoma, okay, Oklahoma see. City. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.